Welcome to the best of Combat Americas, 60 minutes of the most exciting mixed martial arts action. It's mucha más acción as the best of Combat Americas gets started. Here's our first fight of the night. Ladies and gentlemen, we continue with much more action as Cricket Wireless presenta Combate Américas Reinas este duelo. Tres vueltas en la división peso mosca this bout. Three rounds in the flyweight division. Our judges are Jackie Dinkin, Ron McCarthy, and Chris Crail. Introducing first, the fighter standing in the blue corner, presentando la esquina azul, vestido de negro con los colores españoles de rojo y dorado. He stepped to the ring wearing black with the colors of his homeland, red and gold. He weighed in at 128 and one half pounds. Detuvo la báscula a un peso oficial de 128 libras y media. En su séptimo combate dentro de la jaula, con cuatro victorias y dos derrotas. He enters la jaula for the seventh time as a pro, with four victories and two losses. Representando a la madre patria, Tenerife, España. Oscar Jacare. Suarez. Across La Jaula in the red corner. Across La Jaula in La Esquina Roja. Vestido de color verde, he steps in wearing the green trunks. He weighed in at 125 and one half pounds. Su peso oficial, 125 libras y media. En su décimo primer combate dentro de La Jaula, con cinco victorias. Cuatro derrotas y un empate. He enters La Jaula for the 11th time as a pro, with a record of five victories, four losses, and one draw. Ripping Oxnard, California. Malicious, Michael Reyes. Our referee, Frank Trey. Gentlemen, you got your instructions in the locker room. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. You want to touch gloves? Do it now. Go back to your corners. Come out swinging. Great fri fighter in his day, Frank Trigg. Now referee as we go to the tail of the tape. You can see Suarez coming in heavy for that flyweight limit. He is in diapers in his career at 20 years of age, but he has a two-inch height disadvantage, a six-inch via the reach. And a big crowd from Oxnard and Ventura County to see Reyes. They're here to see Froggy Estrada a little bit later. We're underway. Our opener, glad you are with us here on zone. Big time card from Los Angeles. It is Combate Reinas. Nice. Oh, short left from Reyes. Straight right down the pipe and sat him on his butt right away. I love it. Suarez leery of the wrestling, but he got hit with the stand-up game early on. Got caught with that left hand again. Reyes has been wrestling. He was a, a high school wrestler for all four years and was going to make a career in collegiate wrestling until he found MMA and fell in love with the sport. And a lot of people think that he always wants to wrestle, but he's got hands. It is Reyes in the green in this opening minute of our opening bout here on DAZN. Reyes with beautiful head position. Looking for the takedown. For the underhooks, too, as he gets wedged in there. And Suarez is doing a good job keeping his wide hips and, and being able to defend the takedowns of the Changing levels there, Reyes, as he looks to get Boom. airborne on Suarez and drops him hard on his back. That was a gorgeous double leg. I love it. He just picked him up and powerbombed him down there. That was, that was by design. He got low, and then he came up high. And now he's looking to clear the guard. And uh, Oscar Suarez, he's from the Canary Islands, and those guys are super tough. He is very proud of where he's from, Tenerife, Spain, and the Canary Islands. Canary Islands generally where most of the fighters from Spain are coming from. It's a, a sport in its infancy still in Spain, but you know that country develops great athletes in every walk of life. Why not MMA? Exactly. They definitely want to be a champion in MMA, and I think that they can. They have a lot of uh, emerging talent coming out of Spain. You're, Gonna be surprised we got Bruno and the Canadian I believe that's gonna be fighting earlier or excuse me later. Looking for some short elbows there from Reyes. Catches that one. Suarez doing his best to turtle up. Now he gets some separation, but Reyes right back on top of that halfway through this opening round. 
Again, it's a, a very acrobatic style from Suarez, but Reyes, like previous fighters, when they fight Suarez, keep him grounded. And this is where Oscar wants the fight to be. He's got beautiful kicks, but he's not being able to get any separation uh, or any distance from Michael Reyes. Michael Reyes is doing a good job of smothering him and taking all the space away from him. Ooh. Well, once again, it is Suarez on his back. Nicknamed Jacare. Something, a nickname he got from his Capoeira days when he was eight. He's in blue belt in Jiu Jitsu as well. Yeah. Side control there. As Reyes show, he's putting on a nice clinic here. We saw it with the stand up and now with the ground game as well. And this is where uh, Michael Reyes is a lot more comfortable. He wants it naturally, of course, to go to the ground and, and finish you there. And that's what he's working very hard to do. The MO on him is that he's not looked at a wrestler, and it, you know, he, he takes that as a, as a as certainly a challenge. He was upset that Suarez did not make the 125 pound limit, and now he's going to make him pay for it. He's doing a good job so far. Suarez yes. doesn't look like the heavier fighter in there. It looks like Reyes has really closed the gap with his activity. Right. approach one minute to go to not allow Reyes to advance from that position. And Michael Reyes with a nickname Malicious Reyes. Every punch he tries to throw with bad intentions, you can see he's really doing that. Every time he punches, he's trying to hurt you. Yeah. He's got the detached lobes. He's got the killer mustache. Got a great look, and he can fight, and he likes the violence. So far, though, he has made those advances, but Suarez doing well to not let the power punches rain down. So far, in my opinion, Oscar Suarez doesn't have much of a threatening guard. I would like to see Michael pass. Challenge it, pass a little bit. Yeah. Get a more dominant position, maybe fall into mountain, you know, because right there, he could pass to that left side. Now he's passed, perfect, he gave it to him. And that was the best from Suarez. He was on his back, on his hip, and he swung out four kicks, which I think a couple of them did not sit well with Reyes. They stung as we approach the end of the opening round. The guys inside La Jaula, we have an epic main event. Co-main coming your way. Las Reinas will be on display. Reyes? All right, we get ready for round number two. Let's look at some of the action from the first round and quickly Reyes with that left hand to set the tone. Yeah, that was a beautiful shot and it really did set the tone here. You're gonna see a big double leg. Boom. Beautiful, perfectly technical. And that's how you do a double leg. Spanish fighters looking for success here in Combate Medicas. It really is a collaboration where they all win if they can get results. So the eyes of many on Suarez right now. We've seen a couple breakthroughs in the last couple cards. Suarez hopes to continue, but he's gonna have to be a lot more active here in the next two rounds if it goes that direction. Ready for round two here, Los Angeles, California. Glad you could join us. We are live on DAZN. Malicious Michael Ray is in green. In that southpaw position too, which can sometimes be confusing because more pe most people are right-handed and orthodox fighters. But it says uh, that Oscar Suarez can do both, go left and right. Suarez cornered by his father, Claudio. As they come a long way for this fight, much as they did when they had to come this direction in Long Beach. Again, changing levels, Reyes, and this worked for him last time when he got Suarez up and over. Nicely done by Michael Reyes. He's going to try to pull him back down to the ground, and, and I really like that Oscar got back to the feet. I would like to see him separate and maybe implement his own game plan, which would probably be his striking since that's his strong suit. But Reyes is just tenacious with those takedowns. Second successful takedown there. Just dominant in the wrestling department. And now you, you, you challenge the guard of Suarez again. It's not looking intact, I, and Reyes is getting through. I did uh, 
challenge the guard of Suarez, but I will also say you don't necessarily need to pass when you're in a position like this. He's stuck up against the fence, just posture up and rain down bombs, yeah. and that's exactly what Michael is doing. He's being extremely malicious in all those. And Frank Trigg is going to stop it. A lot of activity. Suarez did nothing, and Michael Reyes dictated a game plan, and he executed, and he is victorious. Victorious, and he wants a belt. And you know, this is a more natural weight class for Michael Reyes. At 125 is where he feels comfortable. He has no problem making the weight. He is always a professional every single time. And uh, like I said, now this is his uh, seventh fight with us. And I think he's, he's yeah. saying, I want a belt. And four wins. So he has proven his worth. Back-to-back -back wins at Copa Combate. I should say Combate Americas dating back to September. Showcase the wrestling. Showcase some striking and gets a win against a much heavier opponent. Combate Américas es MMA. Mucha más acción. Estamos a punto de hacer historia una vez más, más, más. Los mejores peleadores de Estados Unidos, México y América Latina. Una noche electrizante de artes marciales mixtas. No te pierdas toda la acción. Combate América. Exclusive Combate Americas merchandise. Just go to shop.combateamericas.com. And a nice tender moment between father and son. Yeah, his dad is actually a professional fighter as well, and, and Oscar wanted to follow in his father's footsteps, which is um, very endearing. I think that's super awesome. But it's like a lesson here, because it's different. You need good wrestling. You need a good background if, if, if you're coming from Spain where you don't have that background in this case. And another lesson for Suarez. Yeah, I mean, American MMA, you got to know how to wrestle. And um, I think that he kind of got an introduction to that American MMA um, by Michael Reyes. And, you know, you got to be able to fight everywhere. All right, but American MMA dictates this business right now. And Michael Reyes from Ventura, California, Victoria. Una lluvia de golpes sin respuesta obliga al referee Frank Trigg a parar la contienda con un tiempo oficial de un minuto, 23 segundos del segundo episodio. A shower of unanswered blows obligates referee Frank Trigg to stop the contest with an official time of one minute, 23 seconds of round number two, your winner. By way of technical knockout, el ganador por knockout técnico. Ripping the A05 malicious Michael Reyes. We'll be right back with our second fight of the night after this commercial break. Stop pretending.
lo sigo diciendo, esta es la fiesta hispana de las artes marciales mixtas y estamos a punto de arrancar, señores. Toda mi gente que está aquí, hola. Es emocionada, ven además la gente está ferviente. Combate América es MMA, mucha más acción. Stay connected to the fastest growing sport in the world. From the comfort of your own home, Combate Americas brings you the most exciting fights, the latest in MMA news, features, and mucha más acción. Follow Combate Americas on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. And don't forget to watch Combate Americas on Access TV, Univision, and 2DN. Combate Americas, mucha más acción. The best of Combate Americas moves on. Time for fight two. We continue with much more action this bout. Set for three rounds at a catch weight of 150 pounds. Este duelo, tres vueltas a un peso pactado de 150 libras. Los jueces, the judges, Jackie Denkin, Ron McCarthy, and Chris Creo. Presentando la esquina azul, introducing the blue corner. Vestido de negro. Con los colores americanos de rojo, azul y blanco, he enters la jaula. Wearing black with American red, white, and blue, he weighed in. At 150 pounds, su peso oficial, 150 libras. Invicto en cuatro combates dentro de la jaula, he enters la jaula. Undefeated as a pro with four victories. Representing Parlier, California, el castigador, Adrián. Guzman. Across La Jaula in the red corner. En la esquina roja. Vestido de color verde. He steps in wearing the green trunks. He weighed in at an identical 150 pounds. Detuvo la báscula. A un peso idéntico de 150 libras. En su octavo combate dentro de La Jaula. Con récord de cinco victorias y dos derrotas. He enters La Jaula for the eighth time as a pro. With a record of five victories against two losses. Born. Bread and rip in Fillmore, California. Jose, a froggy Estrada. Our referee, Michael Bell. All right, gentlemen, you got your instructions backstage. Defend yourself at all times, obey my commands at all times. If you want to touch gloves, touch them now. Oh, yeah. <gasps> Bring it oh, no. to the tail of the tape. <gasps> the advantage on the height by three inches. Guzman, two inches via the reach. They'll be fighting at 150. We'll see where they're more comfortable after this, depending on which direction this goes. The support for Froggy Estrada, you can hear it on all four sides of the Galen Center. I wonder if that ever, like, gets gets to him he's got so much support and I'm like does that ever bother you that you don't want to disappoint them exactly it's so much on your shoulders I call that the combate stress yeah he's representing Fillmore representing Oxnard and ah! oh and he caught him with the right nicely done froggy short left and then the right came in show that guy what's up separate and do it again Guzman with the wake up call El Castigador now knows he's in a fight and he thumped him with that punch after that oh and then Guzman caught him with the right, and now some more punches. Forces him to the ground, and now he's... Nasty oh, guillotine, oh, Froggy needs to get joke. some shoulder pressure from the... Get that butt up, Froggy. Shoulder pressure, and get that butt up in the air. On the chin right now, as he's yes. able to slip out. Pops out, and nicely done by Guzman to regain his focus and be able to come back with a big wall of his own. And now and Froggy going for it. They're doing the same thing to each other. I love it. Let's go, Froggy. Oh, oh. fire him up! Keep those hands up, Frogman. Both have fired a early shot that has stung the opponent. Now full on boxing match. Oh, and that little left-right combo getting Guzman's chin involved. And uh, Froggy needs to be careful of that left uh, hook. These two are ready to put their head down and start swinging. Oh, yeah, they are. Literally. <laughs> Look at that froggy connects. The froggy's biting down on his mouthpiece and he's coming forward. He does not care. And, I love and he's it. getting yes. caught, but then that big right hand catches Guzman twice. Punches continue to fly here in an electric opening round. Overhead left misses. Froggy needs to regain his focus. Nice, slowly done. 
Didn't work out there for Guzman. Missed badly with that flying knee. They meet in the nice. middle of La Haula and start exchanging blows again. Here's single leg. Single. And stopped by Guzman. There is a cut above, right on the eyebrow of Estrada. His right hand, 3 2. What a round. There's we, still so much more to go. We, nice it's jab exactly what we expected. Big oh uppercut comes right through route one. Mm -hmm. And then Guzman almost imitates what Estrada throws, and he misses. Froggy's just literally putting his head right down the barrel and just coming forward. He just, he, I love it. It's like he's eating it right on the top of the forehead, and that's exactly where you, if you're going to get hit, you want it right there. Couple elbows by Froggy. Straight left. Nice left hook. Nice oh, straight jab. Oh, got through. The Guzman not doing much in defending. Ooh. Big Thompson machete with that throw. Big right. Up against La Jaula. And Guzman is so much taller than Froggy, so he definitely has to make up for that distance in the, in the stand up. Here comes a big single. We brought him down. That's not two, though. He needs to get those shoulder blades to La Jaula mat. Froggy took, looking to get the back, and he almost caught him a square with that left kick. Nicely done. Froggy wants his back, and Guzman. The good left. He, I mean, he's showing him where he's coming from, but Guzman's not defending. Guzman's got a good jab, though, too. Just needs to kind of throw it, but these guys have been slugging. My goodness. When you see it, Juliana, uh, it's a little more defensive prowess from Estrada. That's a big cut on Froggy's eyebrow. Yep. He gets in close quarters, can't connect, but a good right from Guzman puts Estrada onto the back of the cage. And both of these gentlemen are just so relentless. Neither one of them is moving an inch back or like taking, oh! taking anything. Right hand from Froggy connects. And a right hand from Guzman answers back. Good stuff. Looking for that lead leg, Estrada extends. Again, they meet there, the heads go down and they fire away. And it's like, what would you like to see more of? Nothing. <laughs> it's like they're literally delivering in every single aspect. Oh! A, a, Guzman has an advantage in reach, but he's, like, he's somewhat throwing it away here, Juliana, when they meet in the middle of La Jaula. you got to use your tools. I mean, he is bigger than him, but he's not using that to his advantage. He's letting Estrada in. 30 and Frog, seconds. He's looking for the knockout all day long. Oh. Michael Bell will stop it here. That's a technical foul. Well, let's take another look here. Yep, low blow. The old capital title. And now for Estrada, he's okay. He can take he can take it anywhere. The chance of Froggy emanating from the Galen Center. They've come in numbers to cheer their champ. 30 seconds remaining. Overhead shot misses from Estrada. Guzman coming like a slap with that right hand in return. I'm telling you, it's like a big old thump. Oh. Either a kick or a knee, kind of in between, and Guzman uh, just finding the range. Nice uppercut. Beautiful combo by uh, Froggy. All right, we're going to get to a second round by hook or by hook. We made it. That jab is what Guzman needs to keep using to keep Froggy off of him because he is longer, and whenever he throws that jab, it always pops back Froggy's head, and, and it's definitely keeping um, buying him some time, I would say, because Froggy keeps coming in with these big, huge shots. Cardio fitness is going to be a factor here just because of the volume of strikes both fighters threw, some clean, some not so much. All right, so this is a big fight. Two guys in the upper echelon, although it's at 150, that certainly can fight in that featherweight division. Yep, right in that opening round, Froggy buckled him and then got buckled himself. I loved it. It was like Froggy, Froggy dropped him, and then he dropped Froggy. Then 
Uh, he put him in a guillotine, and then Froggy put him in a guillotine. It, it was like they were. It doing, was a mirror image. Yeah, mirror image. They were even exchanging the same strike. It's, there was one moment where Guzman was hit by a Froggy and Stradley. So I'm going to do that exact same thing in return. It's almost a little cat and mouse here. That's kind of how it is, though, too. And as a metaphor, you're not fighting your opponent; you're fighting yourself. <laughs> They're fighting me. I, I can do it better than he can. <laughs> They're doing a great job. It's a very entertaining fight. We knew it was going to be good. The Battle of the Barrio. Once again, center of La Jaula, fire away. That was a nice kick by Better. Guzman. Those quarters, that left hook catches Froggy on the chin. Yes, it does. That left hook is uh, really a great shot for uh, Arturo. Froggy's wrestling skills coming into view. He just got his brown belt, so. Very good on the ground as Froggy Estrada now looking to avoid a guillotine that we saw him apply earlier. Yeah, and like he needs to dig that left shoulder into the chest of Arturo. Uh -oh. It's just getting tighter and tighter. Look at all that space between his tons of space, but he gets out. And That's I love masterful. That. Masterful from Estrada. Now he gets the back of Guzman. This could be a, a fight ender. Froggy cannot lose this position. Can't get that arm under that chin for the rear naked. He's but he's going to try again. So hard to get this position. That looks better. Is and now Guzman in trouble. On the back. He's going to try to get it under the chin. It's, it is now. El Castigador looking to survive. He pushes that arm, but it's in tight. Use your hips, Frog. Froggy Estrada looking for oh. the submission, but Guzman gets out. He's going to try for it again. Three for a dollar. You gotta punch him into a submission, Frog. Oh, oh squeeze on the tap! The Frogster's nice. done it again! Nice, he didn't need a punch to get the tap. He just went for it again. He got tighter like an anaconda the second time. He got the tap, I love it. Scream for me, Fillmore! Froggy Estrada! The crowd doesn't drive him nuts, it feeds him. He is a star, one of the biggest in Combate Americas. Win or lose, and he wins a whole lot more he loses. He entertains. And he, look look at that cut, and look at the crowd. The selling merchandise, froggy shirts, I want one, Juliana wants one. He has his own ah! Snapchat filter. Let me where you at. Time, victory, bouncing back from that defeat on the road to Levy Marroquin back in November. That's a big cut on his eyebrow. Woo! But it doesn't matter, he don't even feel it, he just won. All right, here we go. I love how he tried three times. He said, I didn't get it right the first, second, third time. Yeah, that one was, uh, and then it went oh, under the chin. That one got in. Nice. It slipped right underneath it, it perfectly. Right there. Literally. It's short choke, too. It wasn't a full rear naked choke. It's a short choke. It was beautiful. It's like a jigsaw piece fitting in perfectly. Nicely done. Buenas noches. Placido Domingo. his boy already in a suit to help out his buddy they travel everywhere yeah raises girl makes all their food <laughs> it's a good it's a good relationship yeah. aplica un estrangulamiento mata león obligando a su rival a darse por vencido con un tiempo oficial de un minuto 30 segundos del segundo capítulo ladies and gentlemen the red corner sinks in a rear naked choke forcing his opponent to tap with an official time a one minute, 30 seconds of round number two. Your winner, by way of submission, el vencedor por sumisión, el froggy, Jose Eso. Estrada. We will be right back.
more exclusive Combate Américas merchandise, just go to shop.combateamericas.com. The action continues. Time for our third fight of the night. Down to the Howla. We continue with much more action this bout. Three rounds in the straw weight division. Los jueces, the judges, Jackie Dinkin, Ron McCarthy, and Chris Crail. Presentando la esquina azul, introducing the blue corner. Vestida de negro con color blanco. She steps in wearing black with white trim. Her official weight, 115 and three quarter pounds. Su peso oficial, 115 libras y tres cuartos. En su décimo segundo combate dentro de la jaula. Con siete victorias y cuatro derrotas. She enters la jaula for the 12th time as a professional with seven victories against four losses. Fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Kira Magua. Batara. Su contrario en la esquina roja. Her opponent in the red corner. Vestida de negro con el tricolor boricua, rojo, azul y blanco. She is wearing black with the colors of Puerto Rico, red, white and blue. Her official weight, 116 pounds. Su peso oficial, 116 libras. En su séptimo combate dentro de la jaula. Con tres victorias y tres derrotas, she enters La Jaula for the seventh time as a pro with three victories and three losses. De Camuy, Puerto Rico, Francis, Hit Girl Hernandez. The referee, Michael Bell. Kira, Francis, Kira. All right, ladies, you got your instructions backstage. Defend yourself all times, obey my commands all times. Touch gloves, do it now. Best of luck to both of you. All right, the tail of the tape, Kira Batara, four feet, 11 inches. Big advantage there for the hit girl and the reach, not as big, but four inches, 116. And Batara made the weight at 116, and then she put on some weight here. So she wants to fight heavy and, you, and put a lot of weight down on hit girl in those situations they can get to the ground. All I can say is MMA is a game of inches, and sometimes being the shorter fighter is not necessarily a bad thing. All right, we're underway. First round action. Here, Vitar with the, the purple hair. That's probably the easiest way to do it. They're both shades of black inside La Jaula. Francis firing right down the center. Vitar with the foot on the pedal here. Closes the gap. This is where she wants to be. And Hit Girl defending the takedown. Kira's trying to get into that clinch, and she wants nothing to do with it. Hey, Sorry, Juliana. No, I was going to say, but this may seem like Kira's back is up against the fence, but she could turn it around here and get the takedown. Well, you see her the way at 4 feet 11 inches, but that center of gravity, she uses her size to her advantage, hence being unbeaten in combate. She is well traveled, did take a defeat in Japan uh, earlier in her career. Um, when she was smaller. What do they say? Good things come in small packages? Yep. But uh, Strong, center you, of gravity. You know who else is uh, strong is Frances Hit Girl Hernandez. She's doing a great job of defending the takedown, and you can also see that she is physically strong. She's keep jacking that underhook up and keep walking to that underhook side. She made a big point about her improvement in her conditioning and getting that right as Batara looks to take her down but had no success looking for that single leg. Yeah. So she, she's definitely needing to defend that takedown. She can't give up that underhook. But if she's not going, if she's not going to stay with that underhook, she's doing the right thing with chucking that wizard hard on the left side. This is impressive from Hit Girl. Second attempt for the takedown. She took a knee but went right back to her feet. Definitely. But Kira looks like she's about to try to power something out and trying to get her hands clasped around the legs of Francis. But Francis is just kind of sitting in a chair and just making Kira ride her weight. And Kira's head is stuck down on the ground and. She's on Almost like she's there. got a Almost go go. Like a pile driver. Yep. Kier steps what balance. Does perfectly. Single leg. Steps over that, um, to that single leg, and now she's right where she wants to be, minus the fact that Francis is right underneath the, her chin with that grip. Stuffing Kira's head into uh, the mat. Patara, who uh, was uh, hovering at 105, forced to fight at 115. Now this is going to be her weight class. Beautifully done. Looking for that takedown. Francis is trying to get back to her feet. She's doing a good job. But Kira is just relentless, making sure that she's sucking, sucking her up everywhere. Francis back to the feet. 
And she needs to take it right back down to the ground. Well, the hit girl knew this is what she was getting Kick into. Kick out that leg. Kick out that leg. Okay, she's going to know I didn't miss that. That's fine. Again, she's looking for the big toss there, but hit girl puts down her hips. Looking for a Kimura as hit girl. I like it. Maybe. Get those hips out. Hit girl locking it in. And Kira stepping around to that Smart. side to defend. That Kimura is still on. It is, but it's going to be a lot harder to pull it Yeah, out. it's going to have to cover a lot of territory, but she is not giving up on that hole. And good for her. But Kira is she, almost in a mouth position with her knee just right on her face, and that's such an uncomfortable position. She's doing a great job. Though. Oh, yeah. We yeah. mentioned how Batara after the weigh in put on those extra pounds, and this is where it's going to come in pretty handy. Locked in. And Francis is doing a good job of not letting that Kimura go, and she reverses her position Did. almost, but Kira's doing a good job of staying tight. She's holding on that Kimura still. Yeah. Oh, and she's still working it. Well, good for her. She can trade it, go for an arm bar from here now if she wants. Yep. Swing out those hips. The just world those... is your oyster. Go for it. Oops. You still have it locked, so just throw that left leg around her face, and you'd have her in an arm lock. Arms tangled tightly, and Do you it. see Hit Girl's like a pretzel arm. now. That's what she's thinking. And Batara knows it. And she's holding on. What a grip here from Hit Girl. She will not relinquish that arm. And Kira is doing a good job of trying to reverse it with a guillotine here. Snap. Guillotine and a snap. Going to take the back next. Oh, and a oh, big knee the to the side again. Instead, she does damage. I love it. The hold has been released finally, and now she's got rear naked on her mind. She's got 41 seconds, 38. A little over 30 seconds left to go in the first round, which is plenty of time to sink in that rear naked choke. Katar's got those big, strong arms looking to go 6 and 0 here in combate. And her legs, which is where 90% of your rear naked choke is going to come from, is, is all in your lower body and, and in your hips. Oh, Katar is a she, She'll smile, she'll pose. Back to the mat, Francis. She'll be America's sweetheart. She gets in the howla and she is a terror. Back to the mat, Francis. Not that way. Not to go see stripes. Punches coming there in bunches. Back to the mat. Tail end of round one. Nicely done by Kira Batara to finish the round strong. Almost chance for a finish. Does he have enough time? Nope. Dang. Referee Michael Bell will stop it there. We'll see round number two. What a flourish at the end there for Batara. And you can tell that she just has so much fun in there, which is also really nice to she see. She loves what she does. Yeah, but she's good at it. Very marketable here for Combate Americas to find these fighters that love the camera, that love to, to talk it up and put on a show. Yeah, I mean, that's hard. Pick good music to come out to. Yeah, especially when you're cutting weight, you're all tired. You're like, you got this interview, this interview, and this interview. You're like, dude, I don't even care. Like, I just want to skip them all. I don't blame the Diaz brothers for not showing up for any of those interviews or press conferences because it's <laughs> draining. <laughs> but you got to be able to put on all sorts of hats in this business, and that means, you know, this is what you wanted. You wanted to be a star and fight in front of the world. Nicely done by Kira Batara to finish with a flurry of punches there, solidifying the round, in my opinion. Yeah, the last 45 seconds, Batara probably locked that down. The reactions from Hit Girl to what Batara is it? Batara firing up the crowd. Hit Girl, a good response. That's survival mode there at the end of round one. Round two begins. Reina's here in Los Angeles. We've been looking forward to it, and it has exceeded expectations. Incredible crowd engaged here at the Galen Center. Frances is going to do her best on the feet here. She does not want to get tangled up with Kira. She needs to control the distance and keep her away. Left hand there by Batara. Nicely done by Kira. Frances needs to get on her own timing. Some punches, hit girl waits. Batara goes Steps. down and sprawl. now is stopped sprawl. and now Hernan is cooking. The sprawl. All right. Well, another takedown for Kira Batara. Her father, Dean Batara, in her corner. Yeah, they are a family that trains together and stays together, kind of similar to Super Nice family. They're always training. Her brother's her training partner. Her family is her main support system, and they all stick together and do a great job of making sure that Kira has everything that she needs. Guitar looking to change levels here. Right at the hips of Francis Hernandez. The lift, the drop, the delivery. And now the guard. Nicely done. Beautiful lead technique. Beautiful technical. 
High crotch. Yeah, Bataru has not fought since the end of 2017. She was scheduled to fight Angela Magara, who made it for the uh, media tour as she clears the guard and now to side control. This is not a spot where you want to be against Kira Batara, and you got to get out of there quick or else she's going to make you feel her yeah. miserable. This is trouble for Hernandez. Qu quickly for Magara, she slipped into a coma. We, we could say she's now cognizant and recovered. Arm lock. Look, here's Oh, active. and she's got to pose she's on. The Nick Diaz. <laughs> she's got the little hand over her side. She is in control here and enjoying the moment. Okay, she's having a good time. Oh, she's dropping those elbows. This is no fun for the hit girl. She's getting hit, girl. More rabbit punches. Referee may have to make a decision soon. All of those are connecting. Crucifix, caught in a crucifix. Nicely done by Kira Batara. Nice heavy hips. Oh, but Francis is not going to get out of here. Spot. Taking it to Mount. And now for the armbar potentially. Yep. And there's that center of gravity, which makes things very difficult for the opponents of Batara. Francis Hernandez able to slip out. You but can, you, there's almost a feel of like Kira playing with her food, like a right. cat and mouse. Yeah. It's out of the frying pan and into the fire. Like she's having a good time in there. She's like, I don't want this to be over yet. Armbar. Arm bar, slipped that in underneath the chin, her foot underneath the chin of Hit Girl. She's got world class jujitsu. Uh oh. Uh oh. Just got Ta tapped out. Kira Batara getting stronger and stronger as the fight goes on. Take a bow, Mogwai. 6 and 0 oh in combate. Have we found an opponent for Super Melly? Oh! Well. Well, well, well. We will be back with mucha más acción after this timeout. Stay connected to the fastest growing sport in the world. From the comfort of your own home, Combate Americas brings you the most exciting fights, the latest in MMA news, features, and mucha más acción. Follow Combate Americas on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. And don't forget to watch Combate Americas on Access TV, Univision, and 2DN. Combate Américas, mucha más acción. Esta es la fiesta hispana de las artes marciales mixtas y estamos a punto de arrancar, señores. Toda mi gente que está aquí, ahora es emocionada. Ven, además, la gente está ferviente. Combate América es MMA. Mucha más acción. I want to see Super Melly. Right. But who are we going to vote her? But hey, you're in the, you're in the weight are. class. You're 6 and 0. Oh. She said she wanted to fight the best. And everyone. And that would be a big fight in 2019. Yeah, yeah. Learned by Francis hit girl Hernandez had her moments but ran in to a machine who knows what she's doing in there as she improves to 6 and 0 Okay look at the replay and this on the ground unloading with the punches Crucifix didn't get the rear naked, was able to settle there for the arm bar. And the quick tap.
Always the showgirl there inside La Jaula. And we'll see what's next. A lot of questions to be answered moving forward in what's going to be a massive 2019 for Combate Americas. Who knows what the future holds? We have so many questions to answer. We're going to get some answers here at some point. And for the hit girl, now the decision will get it up to Lupe Contreras for the official another win for Kira Batara after the long layoff. One that certainly is going to be as sweet as candy. At the Galen Center here in Los Angeles, a highly anticipated card which is delivered Kate Del Castillo, the Reina del Sur, the Reina here, Oficial of Campbell McLaren and everyone under the Combate Americas umbrella. And everyone, she having a, a join the evening here. Look at that, Mario Lopez and Kate Del Castillo. Everyone switching, they've been having conversations throughout the Galen Center, enjoying the evening. One big fight to come here as we put a bow on a very exciting Friday night. All right, official decision. Time to go inside La Jaula for the details. We hand it off to Lupe Contreras. Damas y caballeros, la esquina azul aplica una barra de brazo obligando a su rival a darse por vencida con un tiempo oficial de 2 minutos 55 segundos del segundo capítulo. Ladies and gentlemen, the blue corner sinks in an arm bar, forcing her opponent to tap out with an official time of 2 minutes 55 seconds of round number 2. Your winner, by way of submission, la ganadora por sumisión, The Maguay, Kira Batara. Thanks for watching the best of Combate Americas.